These dino ribs are dino might. Today we're going to test our barbecue skills by making some short plate ribs. These ribs come from the side of the cow, just below the ribeye. And these are going to be slow smoked to make them nice and juicy and tender. Flavor and texture wise, they're going to come out a lot like brisket, so we're going to kind of treat it the same way. We're going to be using our Barbecue General SPG rub today for a really well-rounded beefy flavor. So this short plate ribs, also known as dino bones, the first thing we need to do is trim it up so that we can eliminate some of that excess fat and silver skin from the top of the plate here. That is going to hinder smoke absorption and just be a little tougher for our final product. So I have my boning knife and I'm just going to go in and start cutting away some of that fat. And only thing you got to do is be careful you don't go too far in because you want to save as much of that meat as possible. That's the good stuff. And some of this fat is just fine. That'll be adding flavor. We're just trying to get any excess off the top. And that silver skin is just going to be really tough and it's not going to break down like the rest of the collagen or meat will. So we want to get rid of that as well. We're also exposing a lot of that meat so that it can, we can get seasoning on there. And then once it's on the smoker, it's going to absorb tons of flavor. We'll go around and trim up excess fat underneath too. Just anything that's hanging off. Don't go too deep. Again, this is going to add a lot of flavor at the same rate, but we just don't want too much. We're all trimmed up. You can see this nice, bright, red, beautiful meat that we've exposed by taking that silver skin off. So now I'm going to add a little bit of a binder, which is going to help hold our seasoning onto the meat and we'll go from there. I'm gonna use olive oil for our binder because it's readily available and quite easy and it works really, really well. So maybe just about a teaspoon of olive oil. Really don't need much. We're gonna rub it in there, get all the edges along the bone side all over. And we're gonna give just a touch underneath too. With pork ribs, I like taking the membrane off the underside. That membrane on beef ribs like this on the short plate, it's actually gonna shrink as it cooks and it's going to kind of hold our meat onto the bone. So we're going to leave that because it's going to be helping us out in the long term. We're going to be using our Barbecue General SPG rub. This is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic for the SPG, but it also has a really subtle blend of other seasonings and spices that are really going to make our beef pop and super flavorful. We're not going to be shy about this because there's a lot of meat here and we're only getting a topical application. So that seasoning needs to be enough for everything on this entire rib plate. The sides, and we'll give one coat on the top. I'm going to let the seasoning sit on the meat at room temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes here. And that's going to start that absorption process and really adhere the seasoning to the meat. We set the ribs on a 275 degree smoker for about three hours so it could absorb a good amount of smoke flavor. At which point I put it in an aluminum pan with about a cup of beef broth and I covered it with foil. I cooked it like this for about two and a half, almost three hours until it reached an internal temperature of 206 degrees. I could tell that the ribs were done even without seeing the temperature because the ribs were definitely probe tender. After the ribs reached 206 degrees, I placed them in our oven, which was not turned on, just so that they could rest. And I rested it for about an hour. While our ribs are resting in the oven, I'm going to put together a really nice red chimichurri sauce. That is going to be different than a green chimichurri sauce, which has pepper, cilantro, parsley. This is going to have some roasted red pepper, which is going to give it a really nice sweetness and it's going to pair really well with our smoked ribs. Our ribs should be well rested at this point, so I'm going to pull them out of the oven. These have rested for about an hour, so the temperature should have regulated nicely and it should even out really well. Looking at the bark, it looks really nice. The seasoning is still really well attached. We didn't get any slough off during the cooking process, so all that flavor should be packed on there. All right, let's slice in and see what we got. We're obviously just gonna go right down in between these two main bones. And oh man, 
in. Look at that. Beautiful smoke ring. Nice and juicy. The knife slipped right through it. They fall off the bone. These are going to be absolutely wonderful once we bite into them. You can see how tender that meat is. Oh, just beautiful. So, and as you can see here too, that membrane underneath that we did not take off is holding everything together a little bit. Had we taken that off, these would have all been separated. These bones wouldn't have stood a chance to stay on the meat. So I'm glad we did that. And now, I'm, I've been waiting for way too long to try these, so let's go ahead and give them a shot. And honestly, I'm just gonna pull some off the top here because it is just absolutely beautifully tender. All right, cheers. Absolutely phenomenal. It is so tender. We got a really good amount of smoke on there. You can smoke all the way through. It does take a little longer, and I would suggest maybe a 250 degree temperature instead of 275. But this way, speeds it up a little bit, and I'm still getting a ton of flavor coming through with the smoke. The SPG that we put on, the salt, pepper, garlic, really focuses on bringing out the natural flavors of the meat and just accentuating everything that this beautiful beef has to offer, and it turned out wonderfully. You can see how tender this is, and this is just fall off the bone delicious. So I'm really excited to put some of this chimichurri, maybe get some tortillas going, but this is absolutely delicious. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. If you like this video and want to see more, please click subscribe. You can also head to psseasoning.com for this recipe and all the products available. You can also follow us on any form of social media. Till next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.